current drive uh, and voltage drive limitation we, uh, we call it clipping the, ver the voltage clips or the current clips it's a hard limiting mechanism this is of course very non-linear but we can also have that our devices that that have the amplification mechanism embodied do not have linear characteristic a transistor does not have a linear characteristic not at all so and that causes non-linear behavior and maybe not that strong not necessarily clipping and we call that often weakly non-linear behavior and we characterize it in another way so let's say this is what we would like to have we have seen amplifier we want to have a linear instantaneous time invariant characteristic which is straight line through the origin if we have the input quantity in the x-axis and the output quantity at the y-axis so this is just a characteristic of an amplifier instantaneous means if you would measure this very high speed it will still be the same if it changes if your rate if your rate of change increases then it's not instantaneous anymore but in reality you have something like this it can be worse of course but i just sketched this line how are we going to specify that is the question here the red line with respect to the blue one what kind of let's say of course you can say well there is an error the error is it, it deviates so and so much but can we use useful terms that are meaningful during the design that is what we continuously ask ourselves and then think about that we can have for example a Taylor expansion of such a, a, a thing a Taylor series and the zero order coefficient is a constant and uh, a constant and we call this constant offset and the first order coefficient is like the 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 angle the angle like the angle of the blue one but now the angle here and if you do it in the origin well we first need to select an origin then then it would we call it the gain and the higher order coefficients yeah they do something with non-linearity maybe they are not so interested to 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 model them all individually but offset and gain well they are very interesting to model individually and then the other maybe we do something like summing it it's just like what do we observe well do it here first we uh let's say you could speak of a total error if you say well if you just uh your your build your amplifier you wanted to have the blue one you got the red one yes i hope it's not that horrible but let's say uh, for today that we made not the best amplifier then you could say that at this point at some igno uh, input signal excursion we have a total error uh, as indicated in this figure a total error at xi and the total error at any other signal is different it doesn't help much with designing because we want to have different parameters but okay this is the total error let's now decompose this total error so okay first we say what should be the operating point it means i expect if i put zero uh, signal in that there's zero uh, signal out or there is for example if your amplifier works between zero and five volt maybe you want to have zero signal in is 2.5 volt out so that means in this case that this point would not be would be a one axis it huh? would be let's say zero in and it would be something something else let's say it would shift and you can also say well my amplifier is made it needs 2.5 volt in and 2.5 volt out and that i call my quiescent operating point the operating point at which there are no signal excursions so the point where the where the amplifier should work when there are no op uh, excursions signal excursions so we select this point and of course it's specified what it should be before you design your amplifier then this is called you have the equivalent so the, the deviation from this to your blue thing is called the equivalent input offset and the equivalent output offset the next thing is is in this operating point the gain equal to the gain of the blue one so then we talk about the derivative so the tangent of beta and the tangent of alpha so then the relative inaccuracy and you can add the word gain inaccuracy to be to to stress out that you really talk about the derivative 
is then the defined as tangent of beta minus. So what you have minus what you wanted to have divided, divided by what you wanted to have, that is the relative error always. That's always how you define relative errors. So then, of course, let's say if we say, well, then I could now uh, create a straight line through this order uh, with the gain through this operating point, and now I say, well, but the gain is not always constant. Let's say in this point, I'm uh, I should be higher, and then I can talk uh, about this in terms of nonlinearity. So this is the this is a nonlinearity. So the the deviation between what it should be if the system was linear, linear before removing offset and after adjusting for relative inaccuracy. You see, we are stacking up all these uh, things uh, so we have meaningful terms. And of, we also see that in the, in the operating point here, in this, if, if let's say there is a, let's say in our amplifier, there's a very low frequency signal and there are high frequency uh, variations uh, on top of it. Then this low frequency brings it in this operating point. And now for the high frequencies, we have, a, well, it appears that we have a different gain. You see, we the derivatives are smaller. So the gain here differs from the gain in the origin and we call it differential gain. That's a relative error, differential gain. Maybe you had already something about control systems. And let's say that your amplifier is part of a control system and part of a loop of the control system. Then if suddenly your amplifier is working in another operating point, your loop gain is different, which means, and we will see this in this course, the, the, the bandwidth will differ, the, 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 the accuracy is not good enough maybe. So that for control systems and for instrumentation systems, it can be interesting to model the differential gain. For audio, it is not something you want to specify because you, you, it's not the way you observe the error. We'll talk about that later. Uh, later is now. <laughs> so distortion. Um, we can talk about two types of distortion. Usually they, they I, I don't know if they use still this word, but linear distortion, they called uh, distortion because of the dynamic behavior. A sine wave comes in, always the sine wave comes out if it's a linear system. But if you put a square wave in a linear system and it is dynamic, you don't have a square wave at the output, you have something else. And that you could say, well, the signal is distorted, just like the definition of language, isn't it? That, would you, that is what you would call linear distortion. Uh, and for this, we will characterize uh, linear time uh, invariant dynamic systems. Nonlinear behavior, uh, as we have studied before, we have seen this line, this is non, not, it was not a, li a linear line. Um, we, it also introduced new frequency components. You can do this simply by making a Taylor expression and you have uh, third, second order terms, third order terms, etc. And if you put a sine wave in that, then you would have a square sine wave, which gives you a second harmonic and a uh, the, to the power of three gives you a third harmonic and uh, all this kind of stuff. So this, uh, this is new frequency components due to um, nonlinear effects. And the character characterization depends, as I said before, on the perception of errors. Let's say for a control system, I told you it was useful to work maybe with differential gain, but in audio, it is useful to work with harmonic distortion. And in radio, it is useful for to work with intermodulation distortion. Let's say if you put two signals, two sinusoidal signals on a non-linear system, you get intermodulation components. You find the difference frequencies and, and the sum frequencies at the output. And in radios, it means that if you are tuning to one station and close to that station is another station, but the signal is much higher, it might cause distortion and you will hear another station. And it is called cross modulation. So the way you model nonlinearity depends very much on the perception of error by the observer. It's all about information processing. Don't forget that. So here I put some together. In radio systems, we use something like gain compression. You're listening to one station and there is a very strong uh, station 
uh, next to it, uh, you're not listening to it, but it overdrives your amplifier and the, effectively the gain drops. Uh, so you, you will hear that. It's gain, gain compression, uh, intermodulation distortion. In audio, harmonic and intermodulation distortion should also be there. In control system, differential gain and differential phase. In instrumentation, nonlinearity. You never know. Ask the observer how the error is observed, and then this is the domain in which we should describe it. Now, um, why do we want this anyway? Why do we want all this description method for these various systems? Well, basically, orthogonal design, that's one. And the second is, we simply don't have math. The whole world, all the products that we make are, prob are prob probably time uh, variant. They're, we have aging uh, stuff. Um, they are uh, non-linear. Uh, they are, uh, well, they are causal probably. They are dynamic. So time variant, non-linear dynamic systems. If you know something about mathematics, you need for that non-linear differential equations with non-constant coefficients. So the coefficients vary with time. And we don't have, let's say, simple tools for solving them. We cannot derive design equations. Of course, you can solve them numerically, but then you have already something. If we don't have anything, we need an, we need an analytical model to get design information. So we cannot simulate the result before we have designed a result. So that's why we need simple models. So. We use Taylor expansion for nonlinearity, for instantaneous nonlinearity. We use um, differential equations with constant coefficients and linear differential equations for dynamic systems. That's what we do. And then we have Fourier and then we have Laplace. This is what, why you did all this math in the, at the university.